Yeah. We're back. Yeah, so 1989 property. And uh, on the listing, it said that there was $100,000 worth of work done. And it survived, what, multiple hurricanes now? Yep, uh, hurricanes. Yeah, and just looking at, looking at it, we got like new windows. Uh, the grading around the property looks good. New roof. So it's looking pretty good, but we just don't, we never know what we're gonna go find. So uh, I don't know, what do you, what do you think we're gonna find? Um, first impression, I think this might be a unicorn house. You, this might be one of the few where it's like. The first one I decided yeah, to record. Yeah, this is good, this is good. <laughs> yeah. we'll see, yeah, we'll you, see. The, those, the ones where we don't find anything, yeah. it's like that video when I come back and I'm like, all right, let's. Let's, let's, let's find all the stuff and then there's no stuff. Yeah, there's no stuff. <laughs> they all actually right. fixed it right. But if there is stuff, we're gonna show you all the good stuff too as well. So let's go check it out. The first step, whenever you're looking at a property is I always like to kind of do a wide pass or just a general scan of the structure. And the first thing I notice whenever I walk up to the side of the property is I like to look straight down the brick line. And I mean, it's flat. It's, it's, it's straight all the way across. And another thing that sticks out to me is all their gutters are going into some sort of surface drain system and they have this rock barrier around this property. Whoever owns this property, before they sold it, they took tremendous care and you just never see this. What Josh was talking about at the beginning of the video, it's a unicorn. You get like this maybe one out of like 50 houses where someone has gone above and beyond and taken really good care of their property. And new windows, and they're even flashed properly too, which again, you never see on older properties. All right, so, so far this house has been pretty impressive, uh, but there are a few things that, that we see on this side. Um, no house is perfect. And so one thing that we see here is we have a downspout that is does not have a splash block or any sort of, um, uh, where it deters the rainwater away from the house, no catch basin or anything like that. Um, and this area is a little bit lower, um, so you do have some, some mud developing here. We have had a lot of rain recently, so it's not horrible, but definitely something that we will point out to the client just for them to keep an eye on in the future. Uh, the next thing we have over here is we have an expansion joint in the brick. And one thing that we like to do as home inspectors is we start at the bottom and just trace it all the way to the top. And we see like the top eight to 10 feet, there's a little bit of separation in the expansion joint. Now for a 1989 property, this is almost nothing. Um, there's very little separation at all. And so we're gonna attribute this to seasonal settlement of the foundation. Again, something that the homeowner can keep an eye on, but not something that needs immediate repair. Next thing we wanna point on this side is the AC units. Uh, we have two newer train units, uh, not brand new, but they are a couple of years old. Um, but one thing we really like to see as inspectors when uh, the seller's disclosure says that they've invested some money in fixing up the property, is good quality AC units. Uh, and that's what we see here today. So far, everything we've seen on the install is uh, is solid. And so we'll definitely run these to check the differential, make sure they're operating properly. Since you got on a roof. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> you always keep your glove attached to right there? Yep. Just in case it's too hot? Yeah. They even did the felt paper right. Yeah, you can talk when you're up there too. Okay. That's a nice roof. There's nothing wrong. I don't see anything wrong, Chris. They even put a uh, solar powered vent fan on the garage. Oh, nice. Yeah. These things are I see a little fans. bit of a um, discoloration right here. You see anything right there from that? Uh, it's like some foot traffic damage. Oh, foot traffic? Yeah, a little bit of foot traffic bruising, but they got flashing above the windows. They did the trim correctly around the windows. Explain how they did it correctly. So on the trim, you kind of want to do it like shingles where you put the, the horizontal bottom piece first, and that should be the width of the window and you put the two side pieces down so that there's a vertical joint on the corner so that if water collects in that joint, it can just run down. If you run a horizontal joint across the bottom, water will collect there and find a way in. Nice. Redneck kick out. You got a little bit of kick out. It's not standard kick out, but it's actually just impressive that they uh, tried to install it over here. Just a little bit of damage siding right here. 
nothing too crazy. So we're actually finding more things on the neighbor's house <laughs> than this house. Um, so you have the two solar powered vent fans, which are really nice. Um, if it's in your budget, I high re highly recommend those. But they put them a little bit too close to the uh, the soffit, or I'm sorry, the ridge vent. Um, and what's actually gonna happen is as those fans turn on, it's gonna pull air into the ridge vent instead of pulling air out uh, like it's supposed to do. So uh, if you have an install, it should be, the, the one on the left looks okay, but the one on the right's too close to the ridge vent. Yeah, so we want the water, uh, water. <laughs> we want the uh, air. <laughs> Hey, we're new, we're, you know, we're getting back into it. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're newbies again. <laughs> yeah, you want the air to pull from the soffit and not the ridge, because what happens is a, a circular air effect happens at the, uh, the top of the attic space over there. Okay, coming across the back side of the property, again, we've noticed that they've replaced all the siding all the way around the garage, all the way around the whole structure. And normally on a 1989 property, you get this siding called masonite. And what, homeowners tend to do with masonite is they just keep painting it and painting it as it rots and deteriorates or they didn't paint or they did not keep it painting and painted and water has gotten in from the bottom which causes the siding to swell uh, this homeowner may have had that in the past and they've actually replaced it all the way around with brand new fiber cement board and you don't see that too often and whenever they do install it like this they don't install it correctly like it is today so like josh uh, dictated on the uh, earlier in the video saying that the the trim is done correctly uh, fiber cement's installed and they even attempted to do kick out flashing around the, the side man again this uh property is a unicorn and it's it's looking really good so far okay coming into the garage uh i have josh here he's working on the the panel to remove the cover and one of our standards of practices that we uh, just now recently had to start reporting on it is the uh, there is a surge protector installed on the property and uh, most properties are not going to have it but you can see at the top of this this panel that there is one and Josh has recently reviewed several of the codes to make sure that these are installed correctly and he's going to review it for you. Panel box here. Um, this is an older panel box. Looks like it's original to the house. Um, and so a lot of our SOPs, we have to call out things that don't meet current electrical code. Uh, in this case, we see no AFCI type breakers. Um, we don't have a GSCI breaker for the dryer. And these are all things that we have to point out um, per our SOPs for the state of Texas. Does not mean that the seller has to update them to current building code. Um, doesn't mean that the buyer has to update them to, to current building code. Code. Um, it's just something that we we have to point out um, for our SOP. So everything else uh, looks pretty solid. We have copper wiring. Um, all the wire sizes look to be the correct correct gauge size for the breakers. Um, and yeah, uh, we have some double up uh, lugs on the neutral wires, which they do not do anymore. So that's something else that you know our comment would say does not meet current building standards. Um, yeah, overall uh, decent panel box. Um, it is older, but uh, but no, no apparent issues in here. Okay, the last thing that we're gonna cover, and this is a fairly new uh, building code requirement, um, is the surge protector. Now there's uh, several different options on types of surge protectors and stages. Um, they have stage one, two, and three. Um, here we have a stage one, um, and this style uh, goes on the outside of the panel box and is, is wired into the panel box. Now most manufacturers say that um, the wiring should be as short as possible, preferably less than 12 inches, and should be wired um, you know, into a breaker. Now what they did here is they wired the two hots, uh, they double lugged onto the main uh, overhead service wires. And so that's not something that um, the manufacturer recommends. Um, it should be installed into a breaker here at the top so that the wires are as short as possible. All right, while Josh is looking up that manufacturer model for the surge protector to make sure that we're getting the information to you correctly, <laughs> it's hot, man, it, we're cooking here in Houston. Uh, one thing that I noticed on the inside of the property, especially in, on a garage, is they actually installed a, a, a vapor barrier behind the hardy 
the, the new fiber cement board on the outside, which is pretty rare. But what we really like is these detached garages as home inspectors because this is a really great place to find termites. So if you are inspecting or you're buying a property, the best thing to do is actually kind of just take your time and slowly move stud to stud, inspecting it from top to bottom, take a few steps at a time. And you'd be surprised how often we find termites in here because people just don't look in their garages you know if they see like a little wood pile or some mud tubes in some areas they're just like ah it's my garage in fact it could be termites josh is like our code guy yeah he always gets in there and makes sure i'm always like hey it's wrong and josh is like no this is why it's wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so on this particular model, uh, part of the installation manual says, uh, connect the two black wires to a maximum 30 amp two pole circuit breaker or two adjacent maximum 30 amp single pole circuit breakers within the panel. So here uh, they have these tied into the, the overhead service wires on the main breaker, which is 150 amps. Um, so not meeting the, the manufacturer's installation uh, requirements or recommendations, whichever word you'd like to use. Um, and the reason we like to point that out is if it doesn't meet the manufacturer's requirements or recommendations um, that could void the warranty on the actual surge protector which all surge protectors come with a certain level of dollar amount uh, warranty so if it's installed properly and something still happens to your electronics the manufacturer pays for um, the damage nice so, so up to a certain amount obviously. Yeah. so always look it up you know but this one is installed incorrectly it cannot be double tapped in the main feed it needs its own separate breaker now Break it down for the layman. Just install it on its own breaker, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it should be on its own dedicated circuit. <laughs> yeah, yep. that's it. Yep. Okay. We're headed to the attic space. And just a quick tip or trick, I guess, if you're going to the attic space, is when you pull down the attic ladder, always put a hand up just in case it's not installed correctly. Come back and smack you in the head or the face and it can uh, save you a little bit of heartache later. Let's see if we get my head in this, but <laughs> you can see here, they uh, actually even installed a, another barrier on top of the attic to help keep the house m more cool. You actually typically only see this from homeowners that just go above and beyond like you've been seeing the entire time, like new ACs, new roofs, new siding. They do even the this is where the small things that really matter that save you money in your property is whenever you add the extra insulation around your attic ladder. We're in the attic space. One thing that we did notice whenever we were upstairs, it was 80 degrees. So uh, there's a chance, I don't know what Mark's doing. Mark is actually the one inspecting the property. Josh and I are just kind of goofing around and recording videos. So <laughs> we don't know if he ran the furnace first, but right now that made the unit might not be working correctly. So. There's a few steps that we go through to make sure that it's installed correctly or the AC is working. Is uh, First, we always start from the top down and we make sure that the, the flue is attached properly and that we're not leaking carbon monoxide into the attic space or uh, have the chance of setting a fire to the property and make sure there's proper clearance up top. The next step is we're gonna look across the unit and we're gonna make sure that there is no major air leaks around the return or the exits of the duct. And one thing that's pretty impressive is it looks like they've replaced quite a bit of duct work in the attic space, which is nice. And it's all lifted and, and separated across the whole attic space, which is another rare find to find in a 1980s property. Most of the time it's laying on the ground and it's leaking and busted open. So the, whoever installed, came in and updated this unit looks like uh, they've done a good job. Where we find a lot of our leaks is actually just by feeling around the unit, it won't be sealed up correctly. And then the next step is we look across the pan and see if it is leaking in here or not. Uh, we don't have any direct access to the coils. If we do, we'll open them up and take a look at the coils to see if they're, if they are, um, sorry, <laughs> if they're, if they're dirty or not, but we can't see that. So, um, right now, just coming across it, it does look like it is performing and it is installed correctly. So, uh, the next step is, is to, uh, check the differentials inside. All right, real quick overview in the attic space. Uh, the, they did add a radiant barrier to the attic space, which is nice. This does hinder our visibility of the rafters a little bit if they are done correctly or not is uh, we kind of just 
take a look at the purlins across and make sure that they, they don't look like they're bearing extra weight or extra load, see if they're cracked or damaged. And then also when we're flying the drone outside or uh, doing our quick or walking on the roof, if we see any dips or uh, damage to the roof structure, which we didn't see on this property either. So it's looking good. And then traveling our way down, now we're looking across the insulation. It does look like it is installed. Um, it is going to be a little lower. Uh, they have not redone the insulation on this property. <laughs> out of everything we found, this is probably the only thing that really sticks out to us. So this, uh, the insulation not being done 100% correctly is okay. It's just gonna be older. And if we'll let the homeowner know the next home buyer if they're looking to update anything next this would be it it is like the surface of the sun <laughs> yeah see so you sweating through your shirt a little yeah <laughs> don't need to take my sauna trip this afternoon yeah uh, okay so another area that they've updated is at the tankless water heater um and so with the tankless water heater, the first thing that we really want to take a look at is have they upsized the gas supply line. Most tankless water heaters require at least a three quarter inch size uh, gas supply line, whereas most, most of your tanked water heaters, it's only half inch. So we just want to make sure that they have upsized everything so that the, the water heater will heat um, and operate properly. The next thing is when you have it vented straight out through the roof, um, it should have a condensate drain line, which you can't really see from that angle, but they do have installed and connected properly on the back side of the unit. So, so far so good on the install. Um, the last thing that we see is not only have they, they put a drain pan underneath, but they've even installed a two by four so that the drain pan is sloped properly towards the drain line going to the exterior of the home. So overall, a uh, very, very nice setup. Um, we do see copper plumbing. And so one thing we always wanna look out for copper plumbing is anywhere that we can see that's visible where it's connected to a dissimilar metal um, nickel galvanized anything like that because when it is connected to a dissimilar metal like that directly uh, it can cause some blackening and some corrosion on the copper pipes um, and eventually that could lead to a leak in the system so we always want to point that out uh, to our clients all right we're closing it up man of course it's the first video that i come back and we get like that unicorn house yeah yeah not a whole lot today yeah <laughs> it was just super easy but it's nice to see things installed correctly too so you know what we're talking about uh in the future i mean i, I i'm actually kind of upset i yeah. chose the, the oldest house that i could find <laughs> gives us hope for humanity yeah, yeah. <laughs> like people do things right every once in a while yeah and uh it ends up being it ends up being really good so yeah. you don't get to see that too often and uh, uh if i had to guess this person is uh an engineer <laughs> Yeah. Engineers are always the ones that have like everything, all their I's dot and T's crossed. So really the only things that we found on this property today was the surge protector being wrong and, you know, the AFCI's not being installed in the panel box, but it's like that on almost every single house in Houston. Yep. And then a little bruising on the, the roof and not much is that it uh, uh, it's less on this house than my own house yeah it's like <laughs> yeah my, my house is messed up <laughs> yeah yeah, I get, yeah you got like 200 dollars worth of fixes on this one yep. which is like compared to thousands of dollars that we find on a typical house so anyways if you want to find us find actual real problems on the next house uh follow us yeah <laughs> hit that like and subscribe button thanks guys bye